All right, hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm checking out Split Fiction. This is a brand new co op game from Haze Light Studios, the same team behind the games like It Takes Two and A Way Out. And I've been testing it on the Steam Deck OLED, and I have to say I'm really surprised at how well it runs. So let's just jump right into it. Now right off the bat, we're talking 60 FPS on the lowest settings with FSR 3.1 set to balanced, which is insane for a split-screen game. But of course, it's not that simple, there are some drops, battery life varies depending on your settings, and if you're playing on a TV or monitor with a higher resolution, you might want to tweak a few settings. So let's go over performance, graphic settings, battery life, and whether this is a game you should pick up for the Steam Deck. Now, if you've played Hazelight's previous games, you already know what to expect. Split Fiction is an action-packed co-op experience with tons of variety. You and a partner, in this case, I've enlisted the help of my wife, will be jumping between different gameplay mechanics from platforming to puzzle solving to intense combat all while working together to progress. Now, what I love about his life's games is that no two moments feel the same. In just the first hour, you go through as many different gameplay mechanics and set pieces that it keeps the game fresh and exciting. Plus, the fact that this is a split-screen game means it's built specifically for co-op. By the way, the game offers local and online co-op as well, and if you want to play with a friend, they don't even need to own the game. All right, let's get into performance breakdown because this is where things get interesting. I tested Split Fiction on multiple settings and here's what I found. So on the lowest settings, it will run at 60 FPS with FSR 3.1 set to balanced or quality, but it is not fully stable. Some scenes drop it to 50 FPS, but overall it's pretty smooth. Now battery life at these settings is about two hours and 30 minutes. Now at medium settings, it runs at around 55 FPS for most of the time, but with more frequent drops to 50 FPS or even below. Now, battery life remains at 2 hours and 30 minutes even at medium settings, so we're not sacrificing much battery for better visuals. I also tested it on high settings with FSR 3.1 set to quality, and it starts out promising, but it can drop below 30 FPS in certain seas, especially early on there was a scene with a spaceship and it really started to dip, it became kind of unplayable, so we had to bump down the settings. Now, battery life on high settings is about 2 hours and 15 minutes, and I do not recommend going over medium, because it's really not a smooth experience. The best way to play, I'd recommend a mix of low and medium settings while tuning shadows and post-processing down for extra stability. This gives you the best balance of performance and visuals. Now here's something to keep in mind, this is a split screen co-op game, meaning you're probably not playing it on the Steam Deck screen because you only get half the screen, so you probably want to play it docked, connected to a TV or external monitor, and you probably want to bump up the resolution to at least 1080p. So I tried that as well, and at 1080p on low and medium settings, you're looking at 50 plus FPS, which is still a solid experience. Now battery life takes a small hit, about 15 to 20 minutes less, but let's be real, if you're playing docked, you're probably plugged in anyway and you're not worried about battery life. Now, I also tested 30 FPS, I tested HDR. For those who prefer locked 30 FPS gameplay, here's what I found. 30 FPS locked on medium and high settings, battery life will be around 2 hours and 45 minutes. And if you prioritize visuals over frame rate, this is a solid option, but it may dip even below 30 on high, as I said previously. Now, 30 FPS on the lowest settings will net you a battery life of about 4 hours, which is great for long play sessions. Sacrifices some visual quality, but it is super stable. I also tested HDR, but personally, in this game, I found it a bit too dark for my liking, so you might want to tweak the gamma settings if you want to use that. Now, one of the best things about Split Fiction is how easy it is to play co-op on the Steam Deck. You've got multiple options. You can have one player using the DeX controls and the other use an external controller, or you can connect two external controllers to the Steam Deck for traditional couch co-op feel. The game is super fun no matter how you play it, and it really shines when you have a co-op partner. Whether you're playing on the deck itself or on the big screen, the experience is fantastic. Now, quick note before I end the video, did you know that only 3.2% of people watching are subscribed? That's a big improvement from last time, but it's still like running a two-player co-op game where only one of you is actually playing. If you're enjoying this thing, that content, hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow, and I'd love to test more games for all of you. So, is Split Fiction worth playing on the Steam Deck? 
absolutely. It runs surprisingly well for the modern split-screen game. Low and medium settings provide great balance of visuals and performance. Playing on a TV or monitor at 1080p is totally viable. Co-op gameplay is smooth and multiple controller options make it easy to set up. And for a game like this, running at 50 or 60 FPS on a handheld device in 2025 is really impressive. If you're a fan of co-op experiences, this is definitely one to check out. That's gonna be it for my commentary. Thank you guys for watching. I will leave you with some more gameplay. If you found this video helpful, drop a like and subscribe for more Steam Deck content. Let me know in the comments what other games I should test next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.